So where did you and this Avril go to last night then? Well, we were supposed to just be going to the Sefton, but she dragged me onto the Montrose afterwards. Didn't want to go. And will you be seeing her again tonight, like? No, I thought me and you would have a nice night in together for a change. Huh? Avril must be busy then, eh? Don't be like that. Just fancy a night in with me fella, that's all. Oh, well, they do say a change is as good as a rest. I wish you'd take me seriously. Yeah, well, I would. If you stuck to your word. OK, then. I'll prove to you I am serious. Just how do you intend to do that? I want us to get married. Married? Like, what's brought this on? I want to be a Dixon. I want me, you and Josh to be a proper family. Well, you do surprise me. I want it all official, I want a church do, bridesmaids, horse and carriage, the full works. Bev, we've spoken about this before, haven't we? And you know that it's impossible. Why not? Well, it's a small matter to that woman Dee Dee, isn't it? You know the one I've been married to for the last 22 years. All right, Sally Sarcasm. No need to talk to me like I'm stupid. Well, you know that she'd never give me a divorce. It's impossible. It's against their religion. Smiling's against their religion. She wants everyone else to be unhappy just because she's a miserable cow. Look, I've got to get off to work. I'll see you later. See ya. What she have to say for herself? Well, son, the plot thickens. How do you mean? She's just asked me to marry her. What? Can't believe a bloody word that comes out of her mouth anymore. Should have heard her going on about this Avril one she was supposed to be out with last night. She sounded that convincing, I almost believed her. Well, we both know she wasn't with Avril. I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, son. Can't bear to be in the same room as her at the moment. I just can't believe that she could be such a conniving little... We haven't got any real proof, Dad. As I say, Aaron and Peter might just be mates. Oh, yeah. And there's a pig flying past the back kitchen window. I can see right through this marriage crap and all. How do you mean? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? She's just after me money. She sees me as nothing more than one big stupid sugar daddy. She just wants us to get married, though she can run off with the queer fella and take half of everything I own with her. Just take it easy, Dad. Don't get so wound up. Your mother would love this, wouldn't she? Bet she's been praying for the last couple of years for something like this to happen. Michael, you've got to promise me that you won't breathe a word of this to anybody, do you? I said if I would. I just need to catch the matty. I need real proof. And when I do get it, they'll be nothing down for the pair of them, believe me. All right, sir. How's it going? All right. How's all this? I've already told you. So I'm in the business and moving away from here. And where will you go? I don't know. Anywhere safe for the minute. Well, there's no prices for guessing what's brought this on. Look, it's killing me not knowing what's going to happen to her. She could be walking free this time next week. And if she is, I can't afford to stay around here. This way it gives us a head start. Michael, can I have a brief word with you, please? It's not about Rachel again, is it? Look, I'll appreciate you'll probably tell me this is none of my business, but as I have more or less officially been appointed as Rachel's guardian, I really do feel that I must vocalise my concerns. And what concerns are these? Well, to come straight to the point, I was most alarmed to discover yesterday that after only a transitory courtship, you are already seeking communal living quarters. You what? Rachel inquired yesterday as to the possibility of you and her moving in together in the bungalow during my absence. <laughs> That's the first I've heard. Michael, if you are grown up enough to contemplate moving in with her, then at least have the decency to be a man and be truthful with me. I swear I am being truthful. Well, it's just as well then. Because for your information, I've already found the perfect tenant. Well, thanks for letting me know. But I never had any intention of moving in there in the first place. On my own, or with Rachel. I'll see you later. Hi, love. Hi. Hi, Dave. I believe you finally found your new tenant, then? Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, absolutely charming young lady with impeccable manners. Uh, uh, do you mind my asking how you know? Oh, she told me, love. Don't worry. You'll have no problems with her. She's no Scally or Lindsay, you know. We sent her to elocution lessons when she was seven, and most people are shocked. You know, when they actually find out that she's from Liverpool, they automatically assume she's from the Widdle. <laughs> do, do you mean to tell me that Lindsay Stanlow is a relative of yours? She's more than that, look. She's my daughter, didn't you know? No, no, she didn't mention anything. Well, 
Oh, she must be ashamed of us. <laughs> anyway, listen, Dave, I just want to say, you know, on behalf of me and Jimmy, thanks very much. This is just what our Lindsay needs. You know, a bit of space, like, to clear her head, away from that no-mark husband of his. No-mark husband? Oh, no, 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 she's well shut of him now. I never understood what she saw in him in the first place, you know. And listen, at least you don't have to worry about her throwing any wild parties over there, cos me and Jimmy will be in and out of that place, you know, keeping an eye on it for you. Well, actually, uh, I, I, I'm afraid that there's been a bit of an oversight on the administration side of things. I've, I've uh, just remembered, actually, I, I can't offer the tenancy to your daughter after all. You are? Look, I know you'll probably think this is most unprofessional of me, but um, I had no choice, you see. I've, um, I've had to offer the bungalow to a, a bereaved friend of mine from the uh, Over 55s Club. But you were made up with our Lindsay two minutes ago. Until you found out she was related to us, that is. No, no, that's simply not true. You're, uh, you're putting words into my mouth. Oh, you'll be telling me I've got a chip on my shoulder next. Well, listen, you can take your bungalow and you can shove it. Our Lindsay would rather live in a cardboard box than pay rent to a stuck-up get like you. Thanks. You've been very subdued today, Mrs. Overall. Mrs. O? You know, Mrs. Overall, she choked to death on one of her own macaroons. You joking? Was she one of the regulars? No. She's from Natalia, you dozy cow. Julie Walters. Julie Walters is dead. Oh, forget it. Hi, Jackie. How are you? Oh, I'm fuming. Why? What's up? That David Crosby one, that's what's up. What's he done? He only told our Lindsay she could move into his bungalow. Now he's found out she's a corker. He doesn't want to know. Go away. Can you believe this? Now we come out with some other pathetic excuse, you know, but I could see right through them. We're obviously too common for the likes of him. So now I've got to go and phone our Lindsay. Break the news to her. Everyone seems really fed up today. Must be something in the air. Oh, you should have seen the gob Ron had on him last night. Why did he give you a hard time? Well, I can't blame him. I mean, I'd go mad if he was out all the time. I thought you'd be made up. Look, this is no joke, Peter. I really meant what I said last night. I really love Ron. There's no way I'd be unfaithful to him. I mean it. We just got carried away. I know I led you on, and I'm sorry about that, but well, the top and bottom of it is that I'm just not interested in you in that way. So this is why you've been funny with me all day, is it? I'm being funny with you. I just feel like a right biff after everything that happened. Look, I'll admit I'm disappointed. You know how much I like you. But all this doesn't mean we've got to stop being mates, does it? That's what you want? Of course it is. I'm glad. I get on better with you than I do most girls. It's probably a good explanation for that. How do you mean? Well, I've never actually told this to anyone before, but I was actually christened Petra Fielder. I had a sex change when I was 17. Mm, we should sue them then, shouldn't you? Or at least get your money back, because they made a right mess of you. Oh, very quick today, aren't we? Be popping the slimming pills, have you? Yeah, what would I need the slimming pills for? I'm virtually borderline anorexic. Oh, yeah, and I'm Kate Moss's skinny sister. I'm glad we're mates again. So am I. It's better than not, isn't it? I should go back to work, then. Oh, hello, love. Uh, come in. Thanks. Michael, your young lady friend is here. Go on through, love. Sit down. He'll be down in a sec. Well, <laughs> You two seem to be seeing a lot of each other lately. Yeah, I suppose we are. Funny, you know, I always thought you were caught in that young Banks lad. I mean, he is more your age, isn't he? Oh, he might be the same age, but he's quite immature, really. I think most lads usually are at that age. Ah. So you prefer older men, do you? Yes, yeah, so it's just as well you dick some men prefer young women, isn't it? You all right? Yeah. Right, well, I'll get off. Leave you to it. You fancy a cup of tea or something? No, thanks. I'm not stopping. I've got to get into town on Christmas shopping. Oh. OK. Well, I'll go and feed our KF then. You guardian angel had a go at me before. Who? Bing, who do you think? What did he say? Well, he seemed to have this idea that me and you were moving in the bungalow together. Oh, don't take me the wrong way. I don't think I'm getting all heavy. I just thought it'd be a laugh. Yeah, I'm sure it would be, but I couldn't move anyway. I mean, I'm only stuck here because I can't afford a place of my own. I'm broke, aren't I? So you're not mad at me then? No, of course not. So, what are you shopping for, anyway? Never you mind. Oh, so does that mean I'm getting something? I do, if you're lucky. Well, listen, if you're stuck for ideas, I wouldn't mind a new stereo. Can you get them in 50 pence shops? Oh, splashing out on me, are you? Mick, you can't let her get to you like this. 
Well, this place is yours and the kids' home. It's your business. You can't just pack it all in and leave it behind. Oh, yeah, I can. Just watch me. But Jenny could get sent down for years. I mean, then you'll have done all this for nothing. Listen, but I'm not taking any risks. I wanted to go down for a long, long time, but there's no guarantee of that. We all know what the legal system's like in this country. Just look what it did to Mandy and Beth. The woman is sick. She needs help. Proper psychiatric help. They won't let her go. I wouldn't be too sure about that. There's all sorts roaming the streets these days. Care in the community, isn't that what they call it? Anyway, it's not for me to worry about. The only thing I'm interested in is getting me and the kids as far away from here as possible. What'd you keep staring out the window for? I thought Bev would have been back by now. She's probably slipped off on another dangerous liaison with Peter the Puff. She's been working. She'll be back in a minute. You should take your mind off this. Why don't we start putting the Christmas decorations up in here today? Look, it's nearly half past. It doesn't take this long to get home. It's only five minutes through that pathway. Dad, take it easy, eh? Take it easy? I just found out that me woman's carrying home at Liverpool's answer to Laddie Grayson. And you're saying, take it easy? We don't know that for sure. In the meantime, you've got to give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm going round there. Dad, you can't keep following her everywhere. You're going to make her suspicious. Well, it's cracking me up doing nothing. All kinds running through me head. Sorry I'm late. I've got Gavin to Jackie Corky on the shop. I thought you'd left the country or something. Oh, are you still sulking with me? I thought you'd have been back ages ago. I was starting to get worried. I'm sorry, I just didn't think. No, you never do, do you? What's that supposed to mean? Ah, forget it. I don't believe you. I've only just got in from work and you're ready having a go at me. I never would have gone out with Avril if I'd known you'd carry on like this. Avril, my bloody eye. Harlot. <laughs> You cash card to come through. I don't know how you get through it all. I only gave it 100 quid yesterday. I could live on that for two months. Oh, don't exaggerate. Have you been Christmas shopping lately? Seen the price of things? You know what it's like. Money goes nowhere these days. And don't you want a good crimbo prezzy? Yeah. Well, I just don't want Eddie kicking off on me when he finds out there's not left in the account. Well, it won't come to that, will it? Won't it? I think it was going out of fashion the way you're throwing it away. Oh, no, just change the record, will you? You're putting your ears on me. All I want is a bit of cash so I can get the rest of me Christmas shopping. That's what money's for, spending. Now, can we go? Ron, why are you being like this with me? I'm not being like anything. You are. You're being dead cold with me. Look, I said I was sorry about last night. What else can I do, eh? Why don't you forgive me? Don't go on, eh, Bev? Just want a bit of peace and quiet, that's all. I hate it when we fall out. Look, why don't we have a nice night in together tonight, eh? We could watch some telly and have an early night. What'd you say? Yeah, well, you can have a nice night in, can't you? Cos I might be going out later, down the Legion. And if I do go, don't be asking me what time I'll be back. Because I don't know, OK? We'll get straight off. I can walk home from here. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm just going to nip in here for a magazine. Oh, all right, then. I'll probably see you tomorrow. And thanks for getting that money for us. Must be a real pain for you. It doesn't bother me. I'm just not sure why you'd ask me to mind it in the first place when you keep breaking into it all the time. Well, it's just until my new cash car comes through. Yeah, if you say so. Look, I tell you what. Save us hassling all the time. Why don't you let me have your cash card? Me and Ed can make withdrawals without having to drag you down there. Well... Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? And it is our money. It's only in there so the legal aid won't find out. And you can still have the interest. Oh, all right, then. I haven't got a carrot in there anyway. Are you sure as he won't mind? Well, it was his idea, actually. Oh, all right. Save me a journey, anyway. Mm. Look, I'll write the numbers down. Oh, it's OK, I know it. Right, I'll see you later, sis. Thanks again. See ya. Ta Just this place, look. Tap. Thanks. Actually, look, can you take the five scratch cards out of that and all? Yeah, sure. Oh, look, make it ten. They're awful addictive, these things, aren't they? Yeah. 
But I'm feeling lucky. There you go. Ta. Lovely. See ya. Ta da. I like Bing. How's it going? Oh, so so. Still searching for a suitable tenant to let the bungalow to. I was rather hoping to have found somebody by now. Time's running out, you see. Jean makes her next move soon. Well, it's your own fault, mate. Jackie Corkill told me about you binning off there, Lindsay, and she's still on the warpad, so I'd watch out if I were you. I merely tried to explain to Jackie that all I wanted was a more mature tenant, and she took it the wrong way. Would you be interested in the place? Well, I'm not sure. But I know a man who might be. Really? Who? All right, Rosie. I uh, just nearly had an heart attack. How come? Well, I just bought a couple of these from the garage. I had two twenty-five thousand on that one. Then when I scratched off the last number, I saw another twenty-five. But then I realised it was only twenty-five quid. You see, that's why they call them art stoppers. Oh my God, they're just a big car. Yeah, but people do win on them now. Doesn't necessarily lead to happiness, though, does it? Yeah, well, that's all sorted now, isn't it? Yeah, well, I still think the odds are too long. Anyway, I thought you'd had a few bob. Now, what are you wasting your time with them for? Yeah, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? And you'd soon change your tune if we won another 50,000. <laughs> I'll see you. Yeah, see you. Yeah, some people are not satisfied, are they? See you later. Oh, are you sure your dad don't mind us sitting up here? I've told you it's got nothing to do with him. I feel bad about us being up here, though. Very exciting, is it? I haven't even got enough money to take you out. Oh, I'm happy just sitting up here. Come in. Hiya. I've brought you up a nice cuppa. It is two sugars for you, isn't it, Rachel? Yeah, that's right. Thanks. Thought it was. There you go. Right, now, do you fancy any gelts? A butty or something? No, thanks, Dad. But all right. Listen, don't think you've got to hide away up here, you know. You're more than welcome to come and sit downstairs and watch the telly. We've got satellite. All right, sitting up here listening to music. Anyway, I thought you were going to Legion. Yeah, 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 I am. Later. Loads of time, yeah. Mm. Right, well, I'll, um, I'll leave you to it then. <laughs> God, you never get a minute's peace in this house. See what I mean? Mike, is it all right to come in? Yeah. Sorry to disturb you, lovebirds, but you haven't seen me purse anyway, have you? I haven't. I oh, can't find it anywhere. I'm sure I had it. I'll go mad if I've lost it. It had about 40 quid in. Sorry, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. Sorry to disturb me anyway. <sighs> We'd have more peace if we spent the night on the hard shoulder, the M62. Well, I think Jack and Katie might be going out tomorrow, so we might be able to have the sound flat to ourselves. That'd make a nice change. Yeah, we've never really been on our own together. You know, like, properly. Um, no. Well, hopefully we will tomorrow. I'll start it out with the others. Yeah, okay. I don't believe this. What? Anybody want to use the bog before I get in the bath? No, thanks. No, thanks, Dad. You're all right. Right, well, I just thought I'd better ask. I don't believe this house. It's like living in the middle of the Queen Vic. Well, hopefully this time tomorrow night we'll have the flat to ourselves. Yeah, I look forward to it. Me too. Doing here? Bev, it? Oh, it's all right. It's just the milkman. I've got the money to pay him. You left this in the salon. Oh, thank God for that. Thought I'd lost it. Look, you shouldn't come round here, though. You know what Ron's like. He'd have kittens if he knew you were knocking for me. Where is he now? He's in the bath. So you're right to talk for a minute? Well, a minute, but I'm not here, eh? Right? When you go berserk if he saw you. Where then? Follow me. Hiya. Hiya. I've won £25 on that, love. Oh. In fact, just give us 15 in cash and another 10 cards, please. All right. Still feeling lucky. <laughs> um, Why are you wasting your money on more? You won't be saying that if I win 50 grand. I think you've had all your luck for this year, haven't you? I thought the idea of gambling was to quit while you're ahead. Oh, don't you be so cynical. I'm not being cynical, I'm being sensible. Oh, I take it you won't want half then if I win the big one. And another thing, not a word of this to your father, you know what he's like. Here, take that. Get something down the chippy for yourself. Keep the rest. I'm off to meet my mates down the bingo. Good luck. Tarlow. Oh, 
oh, oh, this is very strange, isn't it? Hiding in the garage. If anyone saw us now, they'd be forgiven for thinking we were having an affair. Oh, Fran saw you there. I can read the last of it. Has he still been a bit funny with you? <sighs> I can't really blame him for not talking to me. I hardly spent any time with him the last couple of months. I want to make things up to him, though. And how do you plan to do that? I want to prove I can change. I'm even thinking of looking for a new job. I don't like the idea of him working all the time. Not with his health and everything. No, I wouldn't mind being the breadwinner for a change, learning a proper trade, and going to a college a couple of days a week. What are you fancy doing? Don't know. Something that makes me decent money, but I haven't got any qualifications, have I? Besides, if something did happen to Ron, what would me and Josh do? I can't cope with the money I get from cleaning. Not unless I was signing on and all. Besides, I don't want to be cleaning for the rest of my life. Have you ever considered doing hairdressing? Why? Do you think I'd be any good? Well, you spend enough time in this salon. You'd be surprised by how much you've probably already taken in without even realising it. What do you reckon? Hmm. I can just see you with your own chain of salons. Do you really think so? Oh, don't you have to go to college and all that, though? Well, yeah, but I can be your personal tutor. Oh, and don't worry, I won't try anything on again. I'm sure you'd make a brilliant apprentice. I bet you'd pick it up in no time. Do you reckon? I'm positive. OK, then. When do we start? Oh, didn't take you long to make a decision, did it? You know me. Don't like wasting time. Um. One thing, though, Peter. What? Don't tell anyone. Not yet, anyway. I mean, I just want to find out if I'm good at it first. You know, surprise people. Show people there's more to me than meets the eye. Hi, right, Mick. Oh, so you still keep the place running, then? Well, I'll keep here until I find someone else, am I? Well, I might have found a solution to some of your problems. How do you mean? I've just had a bit of a chat with Bing on your behalf, and he's looking to put somebody in the bungalow for a few months. The bungalow on the close? You are joking, are you? Why, what's up with it? You've got a short memory, haven't you? My marriage broke up there. The place was repossessed by the building society. What makes you think I'd want to go back there? Well, I just thought it would have been ideal while you were sorting yourself out with somebody else. No, no way, sin. There's too many bad memories in that place. Thanks for asking on that, Paul. Yeah, well, it was worth it, sir, I suppose. But if you want my honest opinion, I think you're mad for even considering moving. You've got good friends around here. I mean, mad these gone. I don't want you to go as well, you know. Look, I'm sorry, mate, but I'd be mad if I stayed around here. Especially if they let Looney Tunes out next week. Yeah, but it doesn't matter where you're gonna live. Well, if she wants to find you, then she'll find you. Oh, thanks a lot. That makes me feel a whole lot better. Well, it's true, isn't it? Listen, son. I read in the paper before that a woman hung herself while she was on remand. Now, I know this sounds terrible, but I was gutted when I read the name and it wasn't Jenny. Oh, I really believe that's the only way I'm ever gonna be free of it. God forgive me for saying that, but that's how I feel, sir. Look, I understand how you feel, but you're gonna do no good moving, are you? I mean, your friends are here, your kids are settled in the school. You... Don't you think I've considered all that? Look, you can say what you want. I'm selling the business and I'm moving on. I just want to be as far away from this place and that moment as possible. 